let's go back to our MetaMask. So here I have my test account that I created from before, test number one, and I have almost a full ether from the faucet and I have some previous transaction history. So I've got some options I can view on Etherscan and in the main menu here, which is this one here, what I can do is I can create another account. So account two. So let's call this one, let's call it Jeff. And Jeff has zero ether. Let's go ahead and make another account. So I might use another one. Let's call this one Alice. And now if I look at these addresses, let's copy Alice's address. And let's paste Alice's address there. So this one is, maybe I'll write it down the back, Alice. And let's now switch to Jeff and copy Jeff's address. Paste this one and look at Jeff. So we can see that these addresses have been created and these are unique values. So they both start with 0x, but from that point on, we have a unique string representing Alice and representing Jeff. And so every new account or every new agent that is interacting in the blockchain is likely to have a new address. Well, Jeff might reuse his address over and over again. You may or may not want to do that. So I had been working in the JavaScript virtual machine and I had these five accounts with 100 Ether in them. I will switch now to the injected Web3 environment provided by MetaMask. So this is an external environment and we can see straight away it says Robston is my test network and it's letting me know the account I'm working on. I have no Ether in it, but I can switch that. So I'll go back to MetaMask. I'll go back to my test one. And then when I come back to Remix, it updates. There's my address. And it has retrieved the balance now, almost a whole ether. So let's deploy this contract onto Robston, onto the test network. I'll just drag it in. Okay, so test one, new contract, confirm. Creation pending. And I just got a notification saying it was confirmed. Okay, that seems good. So now let's use my Robston account here and send some way to the account by donating. So I've got a value here and I'm gonna click donate. And now I should get another notification here telling me the amount plus the gas fee because the amount is so tiny. Remember there's 18 decimal places here for away. You can't even see it. Uh, the gas fee is significantly larger than the amount of transfer in way, but that's fine. So transaction pending. All right, transaction has been confirmed and I can go down here and I can see the value that was sent, but that was just donate. So I didn't ask for the balance. So let's call get balance now. Let's copy this contract ID and view on Etherscan. Robston. So I'll paste my contract ID in. And here I can see the balance 777. So I could not see that come through here um, because Remix is just my local environment. Okay. 
but I could see the balance come through on Etherscan contacting the actual Robston test network. So let's go back and donate a little bit more. Confirm. Pending. Remember, Ethereum blocks are mined approximately every 12 to 15 seconds. So this is what you're waiting for right now. Sweet. So we sent a whole bunch of eights. Get balance, oh, and we can see the get balance there. So let's go back to my contract address and refresh this. And now the balance is listed in terms of ether because I sent so much more and it's expanded it. Okay, let's see about transferring some ether. So in order to do this, I'm going to need a function let's call it send and it's going to take an address as an argument so I want to send some ether to this address here and I want to do something like address dot transfer and then I want to transfer some sort of of value. So this is approximately what the function is going to look like. Now in Solidity, we can't just send to an address. We have to name the address. And just by convention, we'll give it an underscore here. And you can see Remix highlights it in orange. So that's the argument. So I want to use this address. And if this is the person you're sending it to, you might want to call that recipient. So recipient transfer the value. We want to make this public. Now, we still have an error here. One thing in Solidity is that if I'm actually sending some ether, then I have to specify a payable keyword. So here, I have to say that this is an address payable. And then I also have to say that my function is payable. So payable is a very specific keyword here. And this function looks different than any of the other functions that we will have written. So what this is saying is that the caller's value will be sent to underscore recipient. OK, so the caller's value will be sent to recipient. So how do we access this value? Well, Solidity has some properties that are always available. So some interesting ones here are difficulty and timestamp. And those you can sort of difficulty block number and timestamp you can kind of use and mess around with. Uh, Message.sender and message.value are two that are going to come up a lot. So message.sender is an address payable, sender of the message, and message.value is how much you're sending. So we have already been sending value here in this box from Solidity. So we're going to replace this with message.value. And so if we call the send function with a value in here, it should transfer to the recipient. So let's clear this, deploy the contract, and we are going to go ahead and confirm. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, so we now have it confirmed, so I can have a look here. And I can see a new one. So these red ones are payable functions, right? The donate from before and now the send. So the address of the recipient. Uh, and then I have my other functions as well. 
So using my account one that has ether, recall my accounts in MetaMask, test one, and then Jeff and Alice are empty. So using test one, I'm going to try to transfer and let's do like six, five, seven, eight, and let's do this in GUI. So that's 10 times 10 to the power nine way. And let's send it to one of my empty contracts. So let's send it to Jeff. So I'm going to copy that address. I'm going to paste it in here. And I'm going to click send. Made a mask lets me know there's an incoming notification. And it has been confirmed. So now if I look at my accounts, I can see here that Jeff has received seven GUI and Remix should update my balance in a moment. There it is, minus some gas fee. Okay, so now that the contract has been deployed, if I'm Jeff and I wanna send some to Alice, let's go get, so we know that this is Jeff's account, so let's go get Alice's address. So here's Alice's, copy that, I will paste it into the send, and I need to send her, let's send her three GUI, it has to be less than what I have. So I will click send, confirm, and wait. Okay, let's look at the accounts. Uh, confirmed. So Jeff has less. Let's switch to Alice. There we go. Alice has a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of ether, not even enough to send a transaction. I don't think to cover the gas cost there. Now, I don't recommend that you actually uh, implement your send functions like this, you should have a look at the documentation and be aware of something I'll cover in a future session called the fallback function. So the fallback, just like it says, is kind of like uh, default if no other function matches the call. So the fallback function looks something like this. So fallback without the function keyword it is externable and it can or cannot be payable depending on your implementation. So the fallback function here in the documentation uh, allows that if it's present, the contract cannot receive ether through regular transactions and throws an exception. So if neither a receive ether or a payable fallback function is present, then the contract cannot receive ether. So the fallback um, is a default there. Now, if you read more of this, it says that you should define a receive function, but I won't cover that here. 